D, Decatur, Illinois. Bill Fleming along with Rick Forzano back at the Zia Bowl in Albuquerque, New Mexico, where it's halftime. Let's review the scoring now. In the first quarter, with less than two minutes gone in the game, 158 to be exact, Robbie Martin returned a punt for 43 yards and a touchdown for Cal Poly, and it gave him a 7-0 lead after the extra point was good. In the second quarter, with just two seconds to go, Slaughter ran for two yards for the touchdown. That came about after a fumble recovery by Alonzo Lee, and it was a low tide at 7-7. And then with just 59 seconds to go, Slaughter took it in for the touchdown, his second of the day. The kick was blocked at 13 to 7, and that's the way we stand here for this Division II championship game. Now, it's starting to rain a little bit harder, and the wind is blowing a little bit harder. Therefore, the hot air balloons are not going to be able to be uh, pumped up and set out of the stadium like they have hoped. Unfortunately, for uh, all of us, because it's a very colorful sight. But it is a rather cold day. Now, what we want to do at halftime here is to talk a little bit about the postseason action here on ABC and specifically about the Gator and the Sugar Bowl game. The Gator Bowl game, I think, is going to be an interesting matchup simply because on the same field of play, we're going to have the Outland Trophy winner, Heisman Trophy winner, and the Lombardi Trophy winner. Because last night it was announced that defensive end Hugh Green, the incredible Hugh Green of Pittsburgh, was given the Lombardi Trophy of 1980. His teammate, Mark May, offensive tackle, which made the Outland Trophy winner by the football writer. And of course, you know, George Russell of South Carolina is the highest Trophy winner. Rick, I don't recall ever in history having three award winners on the same field against the Jets. Well, I don't either, Well, and that has to be some kind of football game because when you have Hugh Green against a guy like George Rogers, something's got to give, believe me. The nation's leading rusher, George Rogers, and of course, uh, the highest Trophy winner. So, join us. 9 o'clock Eastern time. Then, of course, the Sugar Bowl. Number one ranked Georgia, the only undefeated, untied team in the nation this year, takes on Notre Dame. And the Fighting Irish, of course, were hopping bad after losing the USC last week at 2 o'clock Eastern time from New Orleans. Now, earlier today, I did mention that I talked to Dan Devine by telephone at his home in the South Bend. The Irish have not started to work out and will not until the 22nd, but I was interested in uh, getting his view on how they have so-called recovered from the loss of USC. He made some rather interesting uh, observations about that, and uh, we'll be bringing uh, those observations to you. Right now, the uh, halftime activities, we're going to have a Western fashion show here at the uh, Zia Bowl, and you'll see some rather uh, unusual and, uh, I think, rather entertaining outfits being worn. We have a Big band down on the sidelines here as the young ladies will come out in typically southwestern dress. As I mentioned, each uh, week in October of every year, the balloonists from all over this part of the country come here. Well, I think this is self-explanatory, so let me continue now <laughs> with, uh, with the observations made by Coach Devine. I asked him how, uh, what, the what the reaction was. Well, on Tuesday night at halftime of the Indiana Notre Dame game, uh, Dan was presented a, a fine plaque and a thunderous ovation to the entire football team. Then, of course, they had the team banquet on Wednesday night. The Indianapolis Alumni Club uh, had a banquet for them on Thursday, so there was an up feeling all, all week long. But the interesting thing about it, was it was Coach Devine felt that his team didn't have the edge. He didn't have the word he used was intensity. Now, during the telecast last week, Frank Boyle made a comment, and he said this, that, that he felt the announcement of the new coach at Notre Dame, Jerry Faust, perhaps was not made at the best time that it was made prior to the USC game. And because of that, it might have caused a little distraction among the team members. Now, I'm wondering, Coach, ex-coach Forzano, the validity of that of that announcement. What, would you have wanted that announced right then or would you have delayed? Oh, I wouldn't have wanted it announced right then because when you coach a football team, you're striving to get them to focus all their attention right there to that ball game they're going to play all week long. 
you're building to that crescendo, which is the game time. And really, you don't know as a coach many times what turns your team on and what turns them off for that particular game. And when you get an announcement like that, it could have had an effect. Now, you always say that because you never know the true answer. But as an ex-football coach, I would say it did have an effect on the Notre Dame Fighting Irish when they played USC last week. Well, I think in all honesty, uh, Coach Devine said that uh, he felt uh, somewhat remiss because he, I think in, in retrospect, as you look back on it, he felt that he, if he had asked the authorities at Notre Dame to delay it, they would have and, uh, and made the announcement this week. And, I, and it, it, who knows, it might have had an effect. But he cites the fact that there was a roughing the kicker penalty. There was a, uh, another a, a penalty on the receiver. There was uh, uh, several other little things where concentration or intensity, if you want to use that word, made the difference. So anyway, those were the observations. And uh, they'll go back into training on the 22nd. Uh, Georgia, of course, has a little bit of a different situation in preparing for the Sugar Bowl in that uh, they'll be there at home in Athens. You know, I think we should have a contest. <laughs> I'd, be, I'd be wanting to vote on the, on the fashions here. There you see the blanket of white that has... Uh, covered the, uh, the campus here. So that's the scene here in Albuquerque, New Mexico. We're going to leave it momentarily to pay a visit to the of Illinois and the campus of Eastern Illinois. Of the towers of Old Main are the landmark of both the campus of Eastern Illinois University and East Central Illinois, located on the southern edge of Charleston. Students come to the university from throughout the Midwest and from many foreign countries. With an enrollment of 10,000, Eastern is large enough to offer excellent facilities for the academic and athletic programs, yet small enough to permit individualized attention. Even the president maintains a close contact with students. The academic program is organized in the College of Arts and Sciences, the graduate school, schools of technology, business, education, and more. In 1981, the football Panthers will move to Division I, but they will always have fond memories of a Division II National Championship in 1978. A wide range of athletic endeavors from wrestling to cross country are highly regarded. Primary aim of the university's overall program is to provide responsible citizens who are prepared to serve and to lead in a free society. Young ladies, they, they are, are young. I was going to say, they are young. And so with the help of the Young American Football League cheerleaders, the orchestra, and the young ladies who uh, showed our Western fashions, We'll take our leave here for just a moment to go to San Luis Obispo and the campus of Cal Poly. The 5,100-acre campus of California Polytechnic State University, San Luis Obispo, is located midway between San Francisco and Los Angeles along California's central coast. Its 16,000 students are enrolled in more than 70 bachelor's and master's degree programs based on the practical hands-on approach to career education that has been pioneered at Cal Poly for the 77 years since its founding. The university is noted for special emphasis and excellence in such applied fields as agriculture, architecture, business, engineering, science, mathematics, and other closely related fields. 
More than 100,000 graduates and former students of Cal Poly are making valuable contributions in communities throughout California, the nation, and, in fact, the world. They are the product of a close teacher-student relationship that makes California Polytechnic State University, San Luis Obispo, a special place in the nation's higher education community. We're back with Eastern Illinois, leading 13 to 7 in a Division II championship game. And it was started off by Robbie Martin, a young man from Orange, California, who scored three touchdowns on punt returns in the regular season, takes this one all the way for a touch. Boy, a low kick. But when you have a guy like Robbie Martin, who has good sense, picks the ball up on that first bounce. Now watch him use his blockers. He gets some good blocks at the wall, but he's an intelligent runner. And he turns the ball upfield. He gets a good field block right there on Alonzo Lee. But watch him now. He's going to come back into the field and go in for six points. Robbie Martin, what an exciting guy. And when you're, if you're going to have a good kicking game, and especially on the return game, you want to have a Robbie Martin. But again, now Eastern Illinois came back. Rod Slaughter, the young man from Detroit, he goes in unscathed, ties the ball game up 7-7. Seven to seven. And then another fumble recovery by Alonzo Lee sets this up, and again, Rod Slaughter, this time, who had fumbled on the previous touchdown, almost touchdown, gets the ball in. They go ahead 13 to seven, and the extra point is missed. So now it's Eastern Illinois. There you see it, the official made a good call. He had crossed the goal line instantaneously. It is a touchdown for Eastern Illinois. Eastern Illinois leads 13 to seven. Strangles horsepower and kills engines. Not now. Now there's the new Alice Chalmer 7020. 123 horses, turbocharged and intercooled. Valves that shed heat, oil cool pistons. A big flow cooling system. A cool running 7020. For red hot performance without working up a sweat. Don Moore Equipment Company in Arcola and the place. Rolling today for you tomorrow. Party's starting, but the icing's not finished. Finish in the car! Renault Le Car gives you great performance without sacrificing comfort. With front-wheel drive and rack and pinion steering, Renault Le Car has great handling. And Renault's torsion bar suspension makes even the roughest roads a piece of cake. Happy birthday! Le Car prices start at 52.68, so see your nearby Renault AMC dealer today. Seventy-five years ago, violence threatened the future of college football. President Theodore Roosevelt's concern for football injuries and deaths influenced colleges to develop safer rules. The NCAA was born. Today, the NCAA is comprised of more than 700 colleges. The NCAA's survival and growth have progressed through its service to college and amateur athletics. The NCAA is beginning celebration of its 75th anniversary this academic year by continuing that tradition. The NCAA, 75 years of service. The preceding message has been provided by the NCAA. Eastern Illinois leading here at halftime over Cal Poly at San Luis Obispo in the Division II Championship. This is the final game, and the winner here today holds the national title. In this first half, Cal Poly has the ball at seven last minutes. Here we go. From Eastern Illinois. Eastern Illinois ran off four and seven offensive plays, 24 for Cal. And I think it's reflected in the score, and uh, it was over the other. 181 for the yard. 
interesting it is that the Outland, the Heisman, and the Lombardi Trophy winners are all on the same field the same night against each other. Talk about South Bend and uh, Notre Dame specifically and Coach Dan Devine. We'd also like to pass along our congratulations to Vince Dooley of the University of Jordan, who was named Coach of the Year for 1980 this year, the only undefeated, untied team in the nation. Uh, he was a very interested spectator, by the way, in the uh, telecast of the USC Notre Dame game last week, and he, I talked to him on the phone this week, and he mentioned that he was rooting for Notre Dame to win that one. He did not want to face the Irish after they had been defeated by the Trojans. So the music continues here, a little bit of country. There's a break in the action at the Zia Bowl, and we'll be right back after this ball. The things we see, like thousands of children who are beaten up every year. Why have over one million people miticized their brakes? Was it because they know Midas has brake mechanics that are specially trained? Was it because they know Midas has the right brake parts in stock? Or was it because they know Midas has over 20 years' experience under the car? Well, whatever the reason, it certainly was no accident. In 1912, the first production Chevrolet was built in a small garage in Detroit, Michigan. Louis Chevrolet, a small group of mechanics, and a crowd of neighbors watched and cheered as the first Classic 6 rolled onto the streets of America. Since then, Chevrolet has become the most popular car in America. Now the 1981 Chevrolets are at Miles Chevrolet with major body style changes, increased efficiency, and new options for the 80s. The 1981 Chevrolets, don't miss them at Miles Chevrolet. Sunbeam is home baked fresh because it's baked right near home by purity. There will be more miracles, unexpected victories, and unbelievable defeats. Unknown athletes in pursuit of glory. Unforgettable moments in the making. The challenge of the 80s is excellence, and you'll find it on ABC Sports, the leader in sports television. For the national championship in Division II, it's Eastern Illinois out in front of Cal Poly by the score of 13 to 7, as Eastern Illinois' Chuck Wright is warming up there on the sideline. This is for the national championship here today. Next week, from Sacramento, California, we will have the national championship in Division I AA. Grand Lakes and Boise State are playing 175 in Eastern Kentucky, last year's champion, is leading Lehigh 23 to 13. They defeated the I-31-7 in Orlando for that title a year ago. The scene will move to Sacramento next week for the Division I of the Championship, so check your local listings. That game is going will begin at 2.30, I believe it is, Eastern Time. So we'll check our listings on, uh, on that one. Cal Poly will receive, defend the goal line to our left, with Eastern Illinois taking the wind in the third quarter. So Cal Poly, which scored first in this game, has seen 13 points chalked up on the scoreboard without being able to score once again. Although it must be said that for the better part of 10 minutes of the second period, they were without Lewis Jackson. And uh, they also are without one of their top defensive players, Hugh Duggan, who was the uh, left tackle who went out with a dislocated elbow. But any time you lose a young man like Lewis Jackson, who had 1,452 yards during the regular season, that is a real loss to your offense. But it looks like he's back right now, and their offense could be ready to move. You looked at Robbie Martin, who has uh, Cal Poly's only touchdown. He is the return specialist. Ball is angled to the far side of the field to Mike Bush, number 81. And he is snagged there, but keeps on going, and is finally knocked down by Charles Person. Defensively, Wanowski 
Then uh, Randy Melvin. Melvin is 250. Kretzinger is 260. Caton is 250. Sledgehammer man. Murray is 220. Alonzo Lee 225. And Ira Jefferson also 225. A seasoned veteran team. Ira Jefferson, a junior there, will be back a year from now. The blitz is on. Oh, I tell you, coming through there so fast was number 53, Bill Mines, who's had a couple of big sacks to his credit. That ball was obviously thrown forward, so it was not a, a lateral. Mines, sophomore from Washington, will be back. Rich Brown, the cornerback. Kevin Gray, a free safety. Don Pittman, also a strong safety and Wilbur James a junior so three of the four are back there in the secondary next year when incidentally Eastern Illinois will move to Division 1 AA second down and 10 enrollment by the way has nothing to do with it Eastern Illinois has 10,000 undergraduate students Cal Poly something like 16,000 here's Lewis Jackson and he can't get by the one man. Don Pittman did a good job defensively. Boy, he certainly did because Don Pittman was the only man between Lewis Jackson and possibly a touchdown. Pittman really reacted well. All right, the Cowboys are back with Johnson, the quarterback. And Craig at full. Lewis Jackson failed. Bobby Martin and Tim Hamilton is what is. Gacia joined us late. Cal Poly coming into this game with two victories in the playoffs, ranked fourth in the nation in Division II. Eastern Illinois also with two wins in the playoffs and ranked number one in the nation. Firing in is Johnston. He has his man between four defenders. Eastern Illinois' Rich Brown and Kevin Gray bring Hannafin down. And it's a first down at the 45-yard line, a gain of 12. Well, that time the offensive line really of Cal Poly gives Johnston excellent protection. The pass rush is being put on. He throws it out of the well, puts it in there to Tim Hannafin. Big first down catch for Hannafin. You know, Rick, it's been a really a great year for college football. I can't say it enough. The one thing we at ABC are very proud of, that NCAA college football this year won an Emmy. Uh-oh, loose ball. Lewis Jackson does the right thing. Doesn't want to fool around and pick it up. Just pounced on it to 33. Well, you alluded to the college football, though, Bill, in the uh, NC2A and the ABC. What a great thrill to win an Emmy like that, and deservedly so. There it is. Jackson does it. Very smart. You can learn from it, you young ball carrier. Don't try to pick that ball up and run it. Just recover it right there and get a chance to go again on offense. And you're listening to wise words of advice from a former coach that made Detroit Lions. But we've enjoyed working with you, and we've been delighted with you. You've been with us for the last five years here on ABC. Thank you. My pleasure. I'm the lucky one. Cage Hill, Shaw, Dom, Dom, and Jones. And Johnston fires it over the middle to Robbie Martin. He might go. No. He is snagged from behind by Kevin Gray, who certainly saved a touchdown. Oh, what a beautiful pattern, and the ball was right where it had to be. Oh, an excellent throw by Johnson. He sets himself firmly. It's a time ball. Martin is going to come back to the inside. And I think a guy like Martin, though, has got to encourage every little guy that wants to play football. Martin's about five foot nine. He comes into the middle. Every time he gets his hands on the ball, I tell you, stand up because he could go for six. Yeah, give credit there to the Illinois defense of Pittman and Gray. Gray made the initial stop, and Pittman came up to help out. 30 yards on that one. And it's a first and 10 on the 37-yard line of Eastern Illinois. Cal Poly, again, going to the air. A floater, and it comes down to Hannafin, and he makes the grab. Tim Hannafin makes a great catch inside the 10-yard line, and it is going to be first and goal to go for the Mustang. But I want to give credit to Craig Johnson. You see the blitz being put on by Eastern Illinois. He gets the ball off. He lays the ball up. What concentration by Hannafin. Rich Brown is right there, but that is a perfectly thrown ball. The ball is high in the, to the outside shoulder. The only guy that has a chance at it is Hannafin. Uh, look at that. Well, I'll tell you, that's something you put in Scholastic Coach. Just a super play. First and goal to go, two plays, going 58 yards, one of 30, and this one of 28. 
Handoff goes to Spiker going in uh, to the middle of the line, and Jefferson made the stop on him. Spiker is the replacement of Lewis Jackson. At that time, Ira Jefferson, the fine linebacker of Eastern Illinois, number 46, he didn't give the play a chance to get started. He got penetration and made the tackle on Spiker. It's now second and 11. Loss of a yard on the play. Lewis Jackson is going back in the lineup. So it's Johnston, Jackson, Craig, and Martin with the split and Hannum. Lining up in the eye. Craig right ahead of Jackson. Second and 11. <laughs> Talk about penetration. Now, I always hesitate to call those because there always can be the man who comes off his stance who causes that to happen. Well, and I think that's something that's strictly a guessing game right now, but let's look at it. Eastern Illinois has a blitz on. But oh, that, looks like the left there end. There it is, the left end of Cal Poly moved too soon. Brooks Wise, who is playing in place. Well, wait a minute, Rick wait Jones. a minute. <laughs> They are calling it against Eastern Illinois. <laughs> now let's take another look. Maybe they made, maybe Eastern Illinois might make contact first. Let's wait and see. I don't know. I, I well, think, I think. I'd have to keep my flag in my pocket on that one. I couldn't make a decision, Bill. Second and goal moves the ball down to the four and a half yard line. Not much for Jackson. Coming through there is number 83, and of course you know who he is, Pete Caton, the All-America right in. Penfield, New York, can be well proud of this young man who attained All-America status. Oh, he is a fine football player. Pete Caton, number 83, and that's a tough loss. Out. Kretzinger comes out, looks like he's holding his shoulder, the deep, fine defensive tackle of Eastern Illinois. But here it is, Cal Poly, third down and about eight. Third and five, right on the five-yard line. I'm so stupid. And here is Johnson getting heat, throws it, nope. Intercepted, in the end zone, touchback. Number 12, Don Pittman. A tough play, getting uh, the heat from those two uh, pouring in men, Mines and Alonzo Lee, and he had to throw the floater, and once you do that, but Greg Johnson, if he ever had it again, he'd like to take this one back because he's going to get pressured on the outside. Watch him. He has a tough throw, number one, going to his left, a right-hander. He just really puts the ball up for grabs. Pittman is there. Interception. Big play, Eastern Illinois. They get the ball on the 20-yard line. And make a note of that, that it comes at 11.48 to go in the third quarter. We may come back to that as the most significant play of the second half. Backfield in motion, I believe. Looks like somebody moves. Parker down. The defense uh, has Gil Martin, sophomore, who's back. Duggan is out now with the dislocated uh, elbow. Peter, then uh, Schmidt, the right end, who also is a sophomore. You'll notice this is a rather uh, young team, except for Kershaw, the veteran, to the linebacker. Hoffman also back there, who will not return in 1981. So the backfield was illegally in motion, a member of the backfield, and uh, Chuck Wright brings his team up for the first and 15. 11 minutes, 42 seconds to go in the third quarter. And Eastern Illinois is out in front of this one, 13 to seven for the national title, a title that they won in 78. Not a whole lot there on that first down play through the middle as Rod Slaughter, who's been outstanding, is knocked down by Gilmart. Gallagher to continue with the defensive backfield. Chris Jones, free safety. Marcio, a strong safety. And LaCharles McDaniel, who practically lose everybody back deep. Second and 12. Again, Slaughter's called on. They shut off the outside on him, which has been a favorite move of his, and he only gets a couple of yards. 13 carries for 70 yards so far for Slaughter. Kershaw making the stop. And this is the way they're lining up right now for Eastern Illinois. Wright, Staple, Slaughter, McGee, and Grant. With Dilbrich, Parker, Becker, Brown, Davenport, and Mahalik. Eastern Illinois leading 13-7. 
Pauley had a great opportunity. First and goal to go in the eight of that Eastern Illinois defense was mighty tough. Eventually intercepted the ball. Good throw to Otis Grant and good defensive play. Grant covered by Gallagher. And it brings up the fourth down. And the Mustangs will have an opportunity to get their hands on the football once again. Where they see Wright going back, but as you point out, Gallagher is all over Otis Grant right there. A good defensive play. The ball was well thrown, but Gallagher was there. Walk down. Good kick by Mansky. Bobby Martin at the 40 in his own territory. Gets it five yards forward, that's all. And the Mustang will take the football. 10 minutes and 12 seconds to go in the third quarter. Time out on the field now. And the score, 13 to 7, Eastern Illinois. We'll be right back after this. You are watching a demonstration of the jeans made to fit the male body in motion. Sedgefield jeans with the physical fit. Sedgefield, the first collection of 100% cotton jeans that won't wrinkle, pucker, or shrink out of size. Regardless of what you're doing, they make you look spectacular. Sedgefield jeans with the physical fit. To find Sedgefield jeans, dial 800, the edge. Now from Seiko, marvels of thinness only the most advanced technology could achieve. The Seiko Ultra Thin Dress Quartz, the new measure of elegance. For him, for her. Even in a time of superb watches, they stand alone. You get the best of Seiko only where you see this sign of your Seiko authorized dealer. Seiko watches available at most large JCPenney stores only. The young ladies from uh, Eastern Illinois are having a little hard time building a pyramid in this wind, and a cold, fighting wind it is, too. I think if I was that cold, I'd build one and forget about it, Bill. Hang on. <laughs> we talked to some of the fans at the hotel this morning that flew in from Charleston. They said, shucks, it was 60 degrees there this week. We got up to this cold, wintry weather in Albuquerque. First and 10 for Cal Poly at the 45. Not much. Two-yard loss. Quick handoff. That was Lewis Jackson on the receiving end, but Ira Jefferson was there to say, how do you do? Well, it's just almost an impossibility for Cal Poly right now to make any yards on first down because Eastern Illinois is in a blitz situation on first down on defense. They have 11 people right up there. Eastern Kentucky now has had its lead narrowed to three points over Lehigh in that semifinal game being played today in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Second down, 13, over the middle, and he's got Robbie Martin. He's wide open. It's a foot race as Martin is being chased. Touchdown for Cal Poly. Kevin Gray was right behind him, and there is the most explosive play of the day. That little guy is something else. Robbie Martin, you watch him now. Now watch old Robbie Martin. As I pointed out, probably pound for pound, the strongest guy on the team. He turns the ball right into the middle. Now watch him concentrate on the football. But this is a team effort. I got to give credit to the offensive line. Eastern Illinois had a blitz on. They picked up the blitz of the offensive line. Excuse me, of Cal Poly. They picked up Eastern Illinois' blitz. Johnson drilled the ball in. Six points, Cal Poly. Great extra effort by Kevin Gray, who made the leaping grab at the ankles of the very fleet-footed Robbie Martin. And so, with that play... It's now tied 13 off. Extra point. All important. The seller has the pressure on him here. He can put his team ahead by one. He does. 14 to 13 as Don Pacella comes through. Here's the touchdown from the end zone. Now watch the protection that they're affording Johnson. And he lays the ball up. He leads Robbie. Watch this. Robbie Martin. Perfect right there. Robbie Martin, boy, he's going to the goal line, but you say Kevin Gray just didn't give up. He just kept on him, kept on him. Six points, Cal Poly. Well, with that score, I have a ball for the return to the Zia Bowl for more of the NCAA Division II Championship game right after this. 
hundreds of beautiful Lazy Boy chairs to choose from and super savings on every one. The Lazy Boy Showcase Shop near you is reduced prices now on all famous Lazy Boy products. Lazy Rockers only $177. Lazy Refiners from $199. And this beautiful Lazy Sleeper only $499. Come in now to the Lazy Boy Showcase Shop near you while selection and savings are at their very best. At 2922 North Broadway Indicator and 506 Anthony Drive in Champaign. Trail boss on a cattle drive. You put in long days under the big sky. And when the work's over, you head for the mountains. Push. Head for the beer that goes down smooth as a mountain stream. Brewed the natural way so it's always as smooth as its name. Push. Head for Bush beer. Head for the mountains. In 1978, the Mid-Continent Conference produced a Division II champion, Eastern Illinois, and a national champion runner-up in 1979, Youngstown State. This year, Eastern Illinois carries the conference banner into the NCAA Division II Championship. Well, here was the situation. It was second and 13, the ball of the 48-yard line, and Craig Johnston has never thrown a more perfect pass in his entire career. Well, I really think that Cal Poly anticipated the blitz because they put Robbie Martin on that post pattern, which is the perfect call. There's no free safety, and it's all the way to you for six points. And Robbie Martin has both Cal Poly touchdowns today, one with a 43-yard punt return in the first quarter, and this now with a 52-yard reception in the third quarter. The extra point, and let's not forget it, by Vesela is good. The uh, extra point that was attempted on the second touchdown of Eastern Illinois was blocked by Razo. And he may turn out to be one of the big heroes of this game because it prevented that all important. Here's the boot. Taken by Staple. Hard runner gets to the 28 yard line. Turn time brought him down. There is a tiebreaker formula, by the way, in this uh, championship series. That's the scoring drive, as you saw, after Cal Poly has been frustrated at the uh, first and goal to go on the eight of the interception of the end zone by Pickman. They came right back. On this kickoff, there was a marker down, and it's going to be a penalty against Cal Poly. Well, that really ball foul, 15. Excuse me, that really improves the field position of Eastern Illinois. Face mask. That wasn't a good ball, it was a live ball. 15 from the point. First down on the 43, Chuck Wright. Number 14, back to throw from the 35. He goes for the long one. Ooh, he had one man sandwiched in there, Otis Cramp. Gallagher. Covering along with Chris Jones. Gallagher 26, Jones 20. I believe Cal Poly had excellent coverage on that. As you point out, Gallagher and Jones both had Otis Grant sandwiched in between there. And I think those, if he'd have thrown the ball well, it would have been an interception or a possible interception. So for the national title now, we've had a seesaw ball game with Cal Poly, who has never won the title, against Eastern Illinois that has the 78 championship trophy. Cal Poly leading 14-13. We're in the third quarter. Swing pass out to Slaughter, the fullback. He's dangerous. Down the sidelines he goes. He could break it. Out of bounds. He's forced at the 23 by Mel Kaufman, who certainly saved the touchdown. Boy, so far, Rod Slaughter has been the offensive show for Eastern Illinois. He's been their runner. Now just watch the drop back right here by right. It's a little swing out there, just right out of the backfield. He's got blockers out in front of him. He uses them intelligently. He comes back to the inside. Now he breaks it back to the outside. There it is, Rod Slaughter. Big play for Eastern Illinois. A big save by number 56, Mel Kaufman. 34 yards and a first down. Ball is on the 23-yard line of Cal Poly. And off goes to Tyrone Davis, number 35, and Mel Coffin again, number 56, takes the stop, along with Kevin Reeder. Moves the ball down to about the 18-yard line. Yeah, you said earlier, whoever has the ball last, this ball game is going to win it. Young players from Cal Poly, he does some things covering. 
spring college football is to get out on a Friday afternoon in a relaxed situation where both teams are just limbering up and talking with these student athletes. I, I really enjoy uh, that camaraderie that goes on. Second down and three. This is Kevin Staples. Oh, a great defensive play from in behind as Gil Martin seeped in behind on the pursuit. And give credit to number 53 in there, Jan Kershaw. Well, here you're going to see Blair Brown out in, field, in front of Staple. Now, they move Staple to fullback on that particular play. They move him over. Slaughter becomes a running back, but Tom Gilmartin, the fine defensive end for Cal Poly, reacted the ball, made the play. No gain. Third down. About three on the 16-yard line. Cal Poly leading the team cut here. 7.55 to the third quarter. Getting some heat, throws it to Otis Grant, completes it inside the five. It's a first and goal to go as Gallagher again comes up to make the stop. What a nifty play made by Chuck Wright as he was falling down. Well, number one, it was a good call. It's a delay to Otis Grant. Slaughter's going to clear it out, and Otis Grant's going to come underneath. But as you point out, Chuck Wright got level, but he kept his poise and unloaded the ball to Grant. First down inside the five for Eastern Illinois. Right on the four at Eastern Illinois. It fell behind once in this ball game, then went up to a 13-7. Now trailing 14 to 13. Has four punches to get it four. Staples gets about a yard of it. Came roaring through on him. Number 53 was Kirchhoff. Chris Jones is number 20. Second and three for the touchdown. Seven minutes to go, third quarter. Sounds like we have two dandy games going on, too, in our 1AA semifinals today. Timeout here is called by Eastern Illinois as Chuck Wright comes over to the sideline. Looks like Otis Grant is having a little problem with his knee pad. So it stops the clock, 6.55 to go in the third quarter. In a game like this, you certainly uh, want to save your timeouts, the three timeouts to the end, and I'm sure that Chuck Wright had that in his mind, but something went wrong, and he said, hey, rather than have a bad play down here, I better call timeout. Well, at 9 o'clock Eastern time on Monday night, live, of course, it will be the Dallas Cowboys against the Los Angeles Rams. This Monday night of the most of these ABC stations, game that everybody's been looking forward to for quite some time and pops and Kirby race for the playoffs. Second down, three, the ball is on the three. And Eastern Illinois, by punching it in, it can go ahead once again. All the defensive men are up there, boys, for the charge. Gil Martin, Reeder, Razo, Schmidt, Kirchhoff, Kaufman, Hasselberg, they're all there trying to stop Here's Tyrone Davis, fumbles the ball. It's loose at the two-yard line, and it's covered by Cal Poly. Ricky Davis fumbled the ball, and coming up with it is Ed Alarcio, his second fumble recovery of the day. Well, I'll tell you, I've seen a lot of football, but never in one football game have I seen a team that looks like they've got six points up on the board and fumble right at the goal line. Right there, you see Ricky, see the ball come out, and alertly, Alarcio Fumble recover, and Cal Poly has the ball again. Two would-be touchdowns thwarted by fumbles right there. Oh, how frustrating that must be. We can't see Darrell Mudra, the head coach, because he's up in the press box, but uh, I imagine he pounded the table once or <laughs> twice on that. And off, just a simple dive play off the left side of the five-yard line as Alonzo Lee stops Lewis Jackson. Well, the first time that happened was in the second quarter when Slaughter fumbled on about the one-inch line and the ball went into the end zone and was covered by Cal Poly. Here, Tyrone Davis fumbles what it looked to be about on the one- or two-yard line with the ball popping out and Ed Alarcio coming up with his second fumble recovery of the day. So Cal Poly turns away the threat at 6.19 to go in the third quarter, still leading 14-13, to 13, the ball on the five. Big pile up. Lewis Jackson just controlling the ball, trying to get it out to some semblance of field position. I don't know, in a game like this, I don't think one point's going to win it. 
I would almost be inclined really with this uh, third down and what four situation with a dangerous threat like Robbie Martin who simply can't be stopped one on one. Why not just pop it to him on a crossing or out pattern. Well you never know except right now that the Eastern Illinois defense when you've got it down in here they are putting so much pressure on and they'll be looking for the pass right now. This might be a good situation for Cal Valley to run it. And they do as the fullback Dan Craig slams it up in there just short of the first down of the 11 yard line. But Alonzo Lee number 51 the linebacker he read the trap the big trap up there and he filled it stopped the play fourth down Cal Poly must punch. Well, that's the situation here today as uh, Eastern Illinois has had the statistical edge, but trailing by a point. Acela has four punts, averaging 38 yards today. Hunting's been pretty good. Pretty good. This one comes up a little bit hard to handle. Takes a funny little bounce up to the 40-yard line. And that's where Eastern Illinois will take over the football after a 31-yard boot into the wind. There's a break in the action here at the Zia Bowl in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and we will be right back after this pause. Casey Summers presents a new addition to their automotive family. We are now Casey Summers Buick, Toyota, and GMC truck. And we now offer you Buick, outstanding quality for over 75 years. Toyota, the number one selling import in the United States. And our newest addition, GMC trucks and vans. Proven dependability for all your trucking needs. That's KC Summers, Buick, Toyota, and GMC Truck in Mattoon, Illinois. When snowmobiles are built to reach high speeds, they should also be built to perform at them. is brought to you by John Deere. Today, championship boxing. The WBC World Featherweight Championship between Salvador Sanchez and Juan Laporte. And the World Sports Acrobatics Championship. An unusual event on ABC's Wide World of Sports today. And you're looking at the Franco champion of New Mexico. <laughs> The wind is blowing quite strong at times up to 25 miles an hour and Eastern Illinois will have the benefit of this strong wind only for the next four minutes and 53 seconds. I would say it's rather imperative that they get up on the scoreboard with the wind because it can be very helpful and there they go for the long one. It is overthrown as Scott McGee was on the run and Alarcio was covering number 40. Chris Jones also number 20. Well, that time it's a play action fake by Chuck Wright off the I formation, but McGee, the favorite receiver, the guy that can score the touchdown, coming into the middle again, but the ball is overthrown. McGee is the guy, and that's the person at the top of the show. We said Cal Poly had a shutdown. So far, they've done a good job defensively on McGee. They've kept him out of the end zone. The uh, Eastern Illinois team has sent Slaughter in the end zone twice. He fumbled very close to the goal line on the other time, and Tyrone Davis fumbled the other time. Wright pours one over the middle. It is incomplete. Intended for Scott McGee and Ralph Gallagher making again a fine defensive play, timing it perfectly, and it was a very clean stop. Now this is a little bit of a square in, a turn in to McGee. Rather than going to post, he squares it off a little bit. The ball is thrown high. It would have taken a heck of an effort by McGee. Incomplete pass. Four minutes, 42 seconds to go in the third quarter. McGee goes out wide to the right. And back to the shotgun. Right. And a third down situation here from midfield. He takes his time and drills it incomplete. And McGee was hurt on that play. He was out of shape when he caught it, but he's not going to give up. He pops right back up. Pretty player. Boy, I'll tell you one thing. He, he got drilled that time. But you have to remember this guy. He was an undefeated wrestler in high school, so he's a tough little <laughs> son of a gun. Watch him come into the middle, and this takes a lot of courage. Number 25, and he's got to reach up, and he gets drilled right in the ribcage. Tough guy, Scott McGee. You'll feel that one when he gets out of bed in the morning. 
Fourth down, and it sets up a punting situation. Now with the wind, they try to get that ball down deep, and it goes too deep, and it goes out of the field of play. So Cal Poly, again defensively, has done a magnificent job of stopping Eastern Illinois as they protect a slim one-point lead, four minutes and 31 seconds to go in the, 30, in the third quarter. College Football All-American coming up, selected by the Football Writers Association. That'll be on College Football in the Special Edition tomorrow. Highlights with uh, George Rogers of South Carolina, the Heisman Trophy winner. Hugh Green of Pittsburgh, who was named last night as Lombardi Trophy winner. And other spectacular highlights of what has to be one of the great seasons of college football. Lewis Jackson breaking out. Goes up to about the 34-yard line, and Kevin Gray, after a 13-yard gain, brings him down. Now, that is big. That is big for Cal Poly. This is the first time, really, on first and 10 that they've been able to run the football on Eastern Illinois. There's excellent blocking at the point of attack. So now this puts Cal Poly in good field position. Gives them more confidence on first and down. A first and 10. I wouldn't be surprised to have them come out and throw the ball right now. And they go back to Jackson. One yard, Randy Melvin says, that's all, my friend. Randy's been outstanding this year, as his defensive lineman will tell you. 250-pound senior from Aurora, Illinois. Boy, and he's only 5'11 with 250 pounds. He is a fire plug, but he can move the football. Randy Melvin, fine defensive tackle, Eastern Illinois. Second down and about nine. Here goes Greg Johnston with good time to throw. Spots his man and is almost intercepted. Roddy Martin had Kevin Gray right in front of him, and Kevin almost had that ball. Again, if you, if you want to learn to be a good defensive back, watch number 10. Kevin Gray, the free safety, who has seven interceptions already this year. He reached Craig Johnson. He breaks on the ball and almost has the interception. Good play, Kevin Gray. Ball on the 33-yard line of Cal Poly. Leading in the ball game by the slimmest of margins, 14 to 13. This again for the national title. After getting some heat, he unloads it off to Lewis Jackson. And that is Don Pittman, who throws the shoulder into him. Number 66, Charlie Krutzinger. Pete Caden was putting on the heat. And getting up rather slowly is Lewis Jackson. Boy, again, they really, the Eastern Illinois defense, really put the pressure on Johnston. Darrell Mudra up in the uh, press box. He's right behind, now he's just to the right, to the right-hand corner of your picture. He's right behind that post in there without that cap lock. The man next to him is on the phones, and Darrell just sitting there studying the situation. The only coach, to our knowledge, in college football who spends the afternoon in the press box. Oh, here's a, the best punt of the day by Vasella. A high hanger, and McGee can't go very far with that one. 24-yard line, and he's down as Mike Dumb buttons him there after a 43-yard kick into the wind. Oh, Eastern Illinois now, 234 to go in the third quarter. We'll have the ball back on the 24. Again, a review of the uh, bowl situation on ABC during the holiday season on the 27th at 2 Eastern time. Mark Herman of Purdue to lead the Boilermakers uh, Phil, uh, against Bill Bradley and Missouri. That's for Memphis, of course. Swing pass to Slaughter that's worked very nicely, and it picks up about nine yards here to the 34-yard line as Ralph Gallagher comes up to make the stop out of bounds. That's the second time. The other time they ran the, that same little swing pass out to Slaughter to the opposite sideline, and it's a good safe pass. He's got blockers out in front of him. It's a good first down call. Rod Slaughter played his high school ball at Cass Tech in Detroit. And with all of that hotbed of football in Michigan, I'm wondering how he was lured to Eastern Illinois. He's been a great performance for him. Joe Harper looking on. He's never had a losing season, and his team is out in front for the national title right now. Slaughter gets the first down for the Panthers up to the 36 yard line. Kevin Reeder making the stop number 75. Gil Martin in there, number 60. 
There you see right there, a good wide angle shot. You see the Cal Poly defense playing that 4-3 and their reaction to the football. Look at how all the green jerseys come right to the football. That is good defense. So with 1.46 in the clock moving, Eastern Illinois is trailing by a point with the ball on its own 36-yard line. Christensen goes to the sideline. Otis Grant on the sideline. With Charles McDaniel covering on the play. At that time, it was difficult to tell if Otis Grant fell down on his own or the Charles McDaniel might have gotten there a little too soon. Let's see now. It's going to be right here at the bottom of your screen. It's just a quick, well, I was going to say it's a three-step drop, but Richardson takes his time, backs it off to the sideline here. Now, just watch. The Charles McDaniel defending against Otis Grant. Tough to tell because Grant is already down on the ground. Well, the official of the line was standing right there and didn't call it. Here's Christensen. He's going to have to hurry, and he doesn't. Tom Perry, number 92, comes up with a big defensive play for the Mustangs. Back to the 24-yard line. That is the second big sack by Tom Perry. He had one in the first quarter, and now here, and that really sets Eastern Illinois back third and very long to go. Watch Randy Perry. Now, watch, excuse me. Watch Tom Perry, number 92. Coming in, he's going to avoid the block. He rolls off, comes to the inside. The coverage is great downfield. That's why Christensen has nobody to throw the ball to. So that sack goes to Perry and the secondary of Cal Poly. Third and 20. Over the middle. That's all. What a hit put on Laurent wow. Parker by Steve Booker. Holy smoke. That was courageous by Laurent Baker to hold on to that ball. Number 31 coming out of your backfield. Now watch number 55, Steve Booker, right there. Watch Baker catches the ball and keeps his eye on it and watch the hit. How did he ever hang on to it? Fourth and 11. 27 seconds to go. And Eastern Illinois is going to have to give up the football once again and the win. Good spiral high kick. Robbie Martin heads to the left. The wall set up on the left side. He goes out of bounds at about the 43-yard line. 39-yard boot, and Robbie Martin, ever dangerous back there as the safety man, gets about 10 quick yards before he's run out of bounds. Has both touchdowns, by the way, today, a 43-yard punt return in the first quarter, and then a 52-yard reception of a pass in the third quarter. That accounts for Cal Poly's 14 points with the Zellas' two extra ones. Ten seconds to go now in this third quarter with the ball in the 41-yard line. Grambling and Boise State, 7-7. Seven seven. We'll have a winner in that one because we have a playoff formula if there's a tie. A little mix up there in the backfield, but coming wide, number 30 of Cal Poly is Jim Colvin. His first action today, a junior out of Escondido, California. And he's knocked down by Rich Brown. I thought he made a fairly uh, decent recovery after a bumbling start. Jim Colvin has been hurt most of the year. He's only carried the ball three times. And the third quarter has come to an end. And Cal Poly is leading 14 to 13. We'll continue after this commercial message and a word from our local station. Since the beginning, we have honored the sun for its power and warmth. Sun and wind, eternal gifts of power. The sun nourishes life on this planet, and it is working for us today. ABC's wide world of sports continues to bring you the constant variety of sport. Next Saturday, the United States tackles Argentina in amateur boxing in a special one-hour edition starting at 5.30 Eastern. Then in two weeks, ABC's wide world of sports makes an historic trip to the People's Republic of China with some of the world's foremost figure skaters, including Peggy Fleming, Linda Plotiani, Ty Babylonia, and Randy Gardner as the world of sports travels the road of international brotherhood. The challenge of the 80s is excellence, and you'll find it on ABC Sports. There is an automobile with remarkable dimensions in technology, like electronic engine controls, including electronic fuel injection for efficiency and performance. 
like automatic overdrive for excellent highway mileage. This car is not the latest wonder from Europe. This is an American automobile. Lincoln Town Car for 1981. A fine sense of tradition, remarkable achievements in technology. It's that time of year, the time to remember those who are very special to us. Eisner can help. A beautiful Eisner basket filled with colorful farm stand fruit is a nice way to say Merry Christmas. Or choose an elegant Eisner gift box of sausage and cheese, premium hand-cut steaks, or perhaps an Eisner gift certificate would be a perfect way to say Happy Holidays. Whichever gift you choose, it'll be very special because it's from Eisner. Johnston, a senior this year who could lead his Mustangs to a national championship in his final game. They have a one-point lead. His team is on the 45-yard line in its own territory. First and the second down, rather, and six to go. We're just beginning the third quarter of play. The snow showers have left the area but have deposited the white stuff on the side of the mountain. And here is Johnston throwing it low after getting some pressure defensively. Tried to get it to Dan Craig. In the 1AA playoff game between Eastern Kentucky and Lehigh, a game at Bethlehem, Pennsylvania today, we have a final. Boise State has now gone ahead of Grambling, 14-7, but in the final, it was Eastern Kentucky, 23, and Lehigh, 20. So Eastern Kentucky will go into the finals against the winner of the Boise State Grambling game next week in Sacramento. Third down, six. Bobby Martin, out of bounds at the 46-yard line, first down. Kevin Gray, again, his shadow today, chasing him everywhere he goes. But again, Craig Johnston, go out to you, he sprints out, he has a strong arm, and he just lays the ball on the sideline to Robbie Martin, first down. Craig Johnson, you know, it's an interesting thing. He's only, a, he's say 5'10", I think he's about 5'9". He told me he runs a 4'9", which is slow, but all he does is win. He, he's broken all those career records at Cal Poly. Craig Johnson, the great quarterback. Well, that's uh, how things stood through three quarters. We'll take a little closer look at a moment. Now it's first and 10. Jam up in the backfield. Craig, uh, for well, Jim Coleman, is getting the ball. There's a marker down there. Somebody might have been moving. It looked like prematurely there in the backfield, but we'll wait for the official signal. Again, let me uh, reiterate that next week at 2.30 Eastern time, it'll be the national championship in Division I AA. Illegal use of the hands. Now, that's the new penalty this year. That's the five-yard penalty on a, uh, an offensive player who's out there using his hands out in front of him, and that's the signal that you get for illegal use of the hands as opposed to holding. There are the stats in Illinois, it looks like they're way ahead in the, not way in the stats, but they had the advantage in the stats. But you can see the score is 14 to 13, Cal Poly. Even the time of possession, there's not that much difference. Five yard penalty, moves the ball back to the Cal Poly side of the Five yard penalty, still first down. First and 15. Well, the Eastern Kentucky team did it again to Lehigh. After beating them in the finals last year, they beat them in the semifinals by three this year. And the pass is complete to Tim Hannafin to the 33-yard line. And Tom Murray, number 57, makes the stop after an 18-yard pickup, and Cal Poly is moving. 14 minutes, 27 seconds to go. Watch Greg Johnston here. The backs are blocking to his left. Johnston sets himself strongly. Hannafin comes into the middle. You've seen a lot of passes thrown in the middle today. In that zone between the linebackers and the deep backs, Tom Murray will come back in here, react to the ball, make the tackle, but too late, it's a first down for Cal Poly. Hannafin has caught four passes today for 70 yards as Joe Harper looks on from the sidelines. In 13 years, he's had a remarkable record of not a losing season. First and 10, the ball is on the 34. Craig Johnson throws it deep. He's got Robbie Martin down there. Did he catch it? Touchdown! Robbie Martin with his third touchdown of the day makes a spectacular catch in the end zone. I'll tell you, when you coach, 
you're always looking for the guy that knows the end zone that can make the big play. Now take Robbie Martin, number five, they're off of their 5-7-9 combination, they call it. He just takes off. Now watch the grab. This is one of the toughest grabs you can have in football. Coming right over the top of your head. Look at the, he extends, he goes into the end zone. Big play, Robbie Martin, big touchdown, Cal Poly. Just super. I don't know how he did it. Oh. He had, he had no footing underneath him at all. He just made a leaping grab for the ball. His one foot was completely off the ground. The other was partially off. There's a marker down. Uh, looks like, to me, like a dead ball foul because it, it was thrown long after the play and before the extra point. Let's hear what uh, that flood has to say about it. He gestured against Eastern Illinois, and I guess we're not going to get the benefit of his of his thinking. They'll probably give the call uh, at the kickoff. Right. Bill. Robbie Martin, five catches today, 135 yards, three touchdowns, one by a punt return. And the extra point by Tom Basella is perfect, and Cal Pollock has now gone up 21 to 13 over Eastern Illinois, and it's beginning to look as if the Division II Championship Trophy will rest in California. Time out of the field, and the score 21 to 13. And we'll be right back after this message. When your car's cooling system fails, it usually happens suddenly, and you're in big trouble. That's why you should have your Pronto Auto Service Center check your belts and hoses this week, and if they're wearing out, replace them with genuine Gates products. Get Gates products where you see the Pronto sign. Together, they'll make your car run better, longer, Pronto. Helping to get your car going again. Come on, check out our parts. The supermarket of October. Pronto. Santa, who's on your Christmas list? This year, all my men will be hub men thanks to the hub special savings of 20 to 50% off collective fall merchandise. Johnny was better, so he gets a sweater. For Dad, a sports coat to make him glad. And slacks for my brother Bill will give him a thrill. Shop the hub three locations in Springfield. We're on your side of fashion. Fourteen minutes and two seconds to go. And Cal Poly of San Luis Obispo has gone up by eight points over Eastern Illinois. But uh, remember that if the score is tied by Eastern Illinois, there will be a playoff and a tiebreaker. Here's the touchdown pass, and again, watch this remarkable catch by this young man, Robbie Martin. I'm not even going to try to describe it. Just watch Robbie Martin. Brother, that's the best of the year that I've seen oh. in any division you want to choose. Oh, Falling down. It. Two men try to grab the ball. Yet again is Tyrone Davis, and he gets it up to about the 15-yard line. You know, that ball had to travel 50 yards in the air, Rick. It was the ball, the line of scrimmage was the 33. Well, maybe not quite 50. Let's call it 45 yards. Yeah, but it was up there a long time. But again, let me just say that team effort again. They had the blitz on. Eastern Illinois did. Cal Poly line picked it up. Boom, there it was. A 59-yard touchdown drive. And a 33-yard pass. First and 10 for Eastern Illinois. 13.56 to go. Swing pass to Slaughter. Fullback gets it to the 25, to the 30. First down on his feet. Staggers. He's still in bounds. He goes to the 40, one man to beat, he can't beat him. Saving the touchdown is for Charles McDaniel, number 45. He was the last line of defense. Well, we could talk about Robbie Martin, but now we got to talk about Rod Slaughter because that's what it's been. It's been Rod Slaughter against Robbie Martin. They have given us effort all day long, and that time you saw Rod Slaughter again on that little swing out of there. You've seen the second man in the eye. Right goes back. Slaughter comes off to your right. He's got blockers out in front of him. But watch him now. Watch him at the tail end of this run. That's what you call effort. He is 
using his blockers wisely. There's a lot of good ball carriers around in this country, but boy, when you use your blockers and you give the effort, now look, he almost goes down. It shows the balance that he has. He turns it up the field. Big play for Rod Slaughter in Eastern Illinois. So timeout has been called here now by Eastern Illinois and will return for more of the NCAA Division II championship game right after this. It folds. Introduces the totally new Lynx. Its hemispherical head engine, advanced transmission, and aerodynamic shape combine to produce exceptional fuel efficiency. Starting today, the world belongs to an American car. Starting today, the world belongs to Lynx. When we decided to bring a new four-wheel drive into our rising power family, we wanted it to tiptoe through the row crops. So we gave it adjustable wheel tread and three-point hitch, shift on the go, an independent PTO, and one surprise. For the 7580 works so efficiently, it eats acres, not fuel. And that's good for you, good for America. Don Moore Equipment Company, Narcola, and the place going today for you tomorrow. The Conference of Champions. CCAA schools have dominated over the past 12 years, winning 54 national titles. Eastern Illinois now has gotten new life on a 61-yard burst by Rod Slaughter. He has totaled today in rushes 136, well, at, no, in, in rushes 76 yards and over 100 in passing. <laughs> Here's Chuck Wright, again to Slaughter. Has a little trouble finding the football and is driven out of bounds at the 30, about 33 yard line by Mel Kaufman, number 36. That little swing pass 56. to the sideline, excuse me, Bill, has been one of the most successful plays Eastern Illinois has had. And I believe that time that if Rod Slaughter would have been able to hold on to the ball, he might have picked up a good yardage. In the 1AA semifinals today, Eastern Kentucky has defeated Lehigh 23 to 20. So Eastern Kentucky has a chance to win its second straight 1AA championship. Boise State has gone ahead of Grambling 14 to 7. The winner of that will meet Eastern Kentucky for the championship next week in Sacramento. Wright getting some pressure, hanging on to the ball, but is driven to the ground back near midfield. Jerry Schmidt was the one who finally got him, but there was another player in there, and I don't know if it was Gil Martin or not. Yes, it was. Tom Gil Martin is the one that put the first pressure on him. And that's the thing. Now watch number 60 at the bottom of your screen. He defeats the blocker in front of him. He puts the pressure on. Now right escapes, but Jerry Schmidt puts the finishing touches on. Big sack for Cal Poly. And again, I remind you, the last two games, coming up to this one, they had 18 quarterback sacks. Third down now, and a long 25 to go for the Panthers of Eastern Kentucky, the defending champions, or not the defending champions, but former champions, as Wright goes for the long one. He's got Grant down there, Otis Grant, and Chris Jones makes the grab at the 14-yard uh, line. Chris Jones again, number 20. Look at the bottom of the center of your screen, the free safety. Uh, he's got a habit of doing this. This is 16th career interception. He gets right in front of the ball. The ball was put up for grabs, but you gotta have a free safety that says, hey, you throw the ball in my area, I'll intercept it. Chris Jones is that guy. So with 12 minutes and 24 seconds to go in the ball game, Cal Poly comes up with another key defensive play. And the Mustangs come out leading 21 to 13 for the national title. Not much there, two yard loss as Lewis Jackson is buttoned by Keith Winowski, number 86. Charlie Kretzinger, number 66 in there. What a, what a job done by the Illinois uh, defensive line. Winowski, Melvin Kretzinger, and Katie. Alonzo Lee has been playing great, too. They have just stymied the run of Cal Poly, especially on first and 10. Well, it's been the passage. The two great passes right. and the one punt return. Robbie Martin has all the touchdowns. Breaking through is Dan Craig, the fullback. 
Oh, he got it up there about eight yards. Incidentally, we will be picking the Chevrolet most valuable players today in this championship playoff game. One from each team, and uh, you might be thinking about uh, what your choice might be. Sorry we can't give you a vote. <laughs> Third down and four. Each week throughout the season, of course, Chevrolet has raised one thousand dollars to the general scholarship fund of the respective institutions of those players chosen by our ABC commentary. The marker down looks like uh, Charlie Crutzinger 66 jump, but again I hesitate because you never know if one offensive lineman comes off the three-point stance before the man jumps, then the onus is put on him. But in this case, it was Crutzinger, and it'll be a five-yard walk-off. That'll give him a first down. Well, this time, Craig Johnson does a good job of holding the cadence right there, and Kretzinger was a little anxious. Five-yard penalty, boy, and you just hate that as a defensive coach because that is a first down to Cal Poly. They don't even have to work for it. And fortunately, the uh, clouds are raising a little bit. The snow squalls have lessened in the mountains, and consequently, the rain and sleet that we had against our windows here, high in the press box at the University of New Mexico Stadium, has lessened a little bit, a bit of a patch of blue off there to the to the left, which is an encouraging sign. First and ten, ball on the 25. Hand off to Jackson. Jackson has the ball stripped, but it goes out of bounds. Ira Jefferson had his hands on it. Although the uh, running of Jackson has been somewhat throttled today, I think the adjustments made by the coaching staff and perhaps even the quarterback himself in the passing game have really carried Cal Poly to this, their first championship game, and they have a victory, or in sight anyway, of an eight-point lead. But I will say, Bill, I think you'll agree, both coaches, Daryl Mudra and Joe Harper, have prepared the stands for the ball club. just perfect for this game. Second down and 11. Firing it out of bounds, and uh, Robbie Martin is on the receiving end. Rich Brown chasing it. First down. Robbie Martin, the big play guy again, watching him, and it's a time pattern. He drives up the field. This is the big thing you want to learn. He's driving up the field. He gets the defender thinking he's going to go deep. He breaks to the sideline. The ball is there, and that Johnston has a strong arm. He threw that ball off the wrong foot and drilled it to Robbie Martin. First down. Down to foul, the strongest man on the squad. He's a weightlifting nut, really. And, uh, Tell you the way he's had control of his body today is, a, is really a, a great commentary on the way he's prepared himself for this rugged game of football. Lewis Jackson stopped by Tom Murray. I don't think there's any question about the fact who our choice is going to be for Cal Poly's most valuable player. Robbie Martin got him off to a seven to nothing lead with a 43 yard punt return in the first quarter, then subsequently scored on two passes. One of 52 and another of 33 thrown by Craig Johnson. Don't know what Robbie Martin's plans are for on, the future, but I would guess they would be rather bright as a possible professional player. Lewis Jackson spinning around and almost gets the first down. I believe they're going to call him uh, down on the yard line itself at the 45, and he had to go to the 46. Now watch Jackson again, the sign of a great back. He goes inside, finds the daylight, but he just refuses to be stopped. He knows he has to get the first down. He's very close. It's third, and I believe less than a yard, Bill. You're right. Now there's uh, the snow that has been deposited with the squalls of today up in the higher elevations. Albuquerque itself is around a little over 5,500 feet. There's Joe Harper talking to his staff with 9.39 to go in the ballgame. Breaking the action. We'll be back right after this call. Is sunbeam soft because it's fresh or fresh because it's soft? Yes, definitely. Sunbeam tastes so soft and fresh and good. Because it's baked right here near our own neighborhood. Is sunbeam soft because it's fresh? Take a bite and Sunbeam is definitely baked soft and fresh by Purity Baking Company. 
what do you think of the Midas foreign car muffler guarantee? It's a great day for my Datsun. A triumph for my triumph. A victory for my Volvo. From now on, you can minus size your foreign car and get the same famous guarantee we give American cars. It says if anything ever goes wrong, Midas will replace the muffler free as long as you own your car. Foreign car owners, now more than ever, it pays to minus size. Championship Boxing, the WBC World Featherweight Championship between Salvador Sanchez and Juan Laporte, and the World Sports Acrobatics Championship, an unusual event on ABC's Wide World of Sports today. Well, that's the official kind of uniform of the day here at Albuquerque <laughs> when the wind comes out from the east and uh, comes off the mountains in that rather cold, wintry weather that has come here to the high country. Defense! Defense! Third down and a yard to go for Cal Poly, leading 21 to 13 in the fourth quarter for the national title. 9.39 to go. Eastern Illinois up there close. Somebody jumps. But they do not throw the flag. Craig has stopped short. Good defensive play there as long as it wasn't an infraction. I thought somebody did jump. Right but the linesman's a lot closer to the football than we are. I sure would like to see a replay of that one, though. Boy, it just looked like that they had the penetration already. Well, that's uh, a little you late. Yeah, can't, can't see it. Let's just look at it uh, from the start, before the snap. That's a way to do it. Boy, I'll tell you, that is a great defensive play by Eastern Illinois. He's still got the ball, has he? Yeah. Here's the punt. McGee takes it, slips. Well, still is on his feet, but down he goes. And coming through there was number 28 of the flag. That's uh, Robert, uh, Ralph Gallagher or Robert Williams. No, check that. That's Tim Hannafin who made the stop. Before this game got underway, Joe Harper had, I think, a rather interesting observation about these playoffs. And uh, it's, a, it's a totally different wrinkle on how you prepare for it. And uh, in a moment, we'll hear his comments. But it really is different than our regular season games. We have not nearly as much time to prepare. We don't know who the opponent is going to be. Uh, we really have never seen Eastern Illinois until we got ready to play this football game. This becomes then uh, really a player's game. It's almost like a basketball tournament in which we play three games for the championship. And we depend on the players, and not the coaches, to come out with a championship in a game like this. Well, truer words were never spoken. Joe Harper certainly can congratulate players like Craig Johnston and Robbie Martin. They have come through today for him. On the first down, Staples got a couple of yards. Now on the swing pass to Staples, he has a first down up to the 25-yard line. Knocked down by Mel Kaufman, but he got it up there to where he had to go. So now, Eastern Illinois with its back to the wall, so to speak. And the balloons are getting to... Uh, be inflated and we notice a welcome ABC up on the scoreboard which we're very happy to accept the hospitality has always been extremely warm here in Albuquerque this is the second year of the Zia Bowl for the national championship in division two and we would certainly like to thank the officials of Albuquerque the Chamber of Commerce and the University of New Mexico that's over the middle and Mahalik the tight end gets four before he's knocked down by once again Mel Kaufman Seven minutes, 35 seconds to go, and Eastern Illinois is trailing by eight. Rob Mahalik, number 81, the tight end for Eastern Illinois. He's the young man they like to go to. If they have to get something going, they want to get a little confidence back in their passing game, they're going to go to Mahalik. Second down, about six. Chuck Wright looks to throw. Can't find anybody. Everybody's covered. Now he's going to be knocked down as he throws the ball off. It is incomplete. Well, he was very lucky there. Boy, what was he, with, <laughs> he and Gil Martin were really pressuring him. But watch number 81, the tight end, Rob Mahalik. He's the guy that makes the play. He's in there to protect. He, he's on Gil Martin. He looks back to the quarterback. Watch number 81. He's going to pick up another block. 
Now he slides off, and if he wouldn't have been there, Wright would have had no one to throw that to, and it'd have been a sack as it was. There's Mahalik, the man on the spot, and they didn't have that big loss. That's a good observation. I didn't see Mahalik, but he did make that good move. And with the third down now, the inside handoff goes to Staple, and he is close to a first down. Jan Kershaw making the stop. And I'll tell you, that is a very big play. It certainly is. And any time, though, when they, they go to the shotgun and you see Staple in the game, number eight, the chances are they're going to run the ball because if they want to throw it, they'd have Barant Baker in the ball game to catch the ball. So that was a key. But I think, let's look here. I don't want to make a judgment. Is, is it a first down or isn't it? It's close. Well, he needs an end. Wow. Millimeter. Big skin green. <laughs> That's as close as you can get without having it, I'll tell you. you didn't make it. You gotta go for it. You hold your, your forefinger up against your thumb and the little bit of daylight that you can get without your fingers touching. That's about how much you've got. I would be surprised if Daryl Moodrow is going to go for the fun of this situation. 6.54 to go in the game. The team trailing by eight. He's got Mahalik, Slaughter, Davis. Two tight ends. I'd say he's going to go for it. This could be the ball game right here. Look at the poised up on the green shirted side of the line. Take that inch, not inch. For some reason, we heard a whistle, so did everybody else. Now we go. Clock moving. Sneak. I don't think Chuck Wright's going to make it. A big surge by the defense of Cal Poly may have stopped him. Kevin Reeder, Fred Russell, Tom Gilmartin, and Jerry Schmidt. And he didn't have the pop. I think the footing may have been to his disadvantage there. You've got to have your feet planted in order to make that sneak work. Well, you always tell a quarterback, try to get your shoulders underneath. That time they got leverage, and he was shut down. Yeah, but you see his left foot there? Mm. It flipped. Back in a moment. Here's your Strohs, Bob. Thanks, Pete. Happy holidays. Thanks. In fact, the holiday Strohs for everyone. <laughs> it's on me. Bob's buying? Bob? Bob's buying the Strohs! Bob? If you haven't noticed by now, you soon will. There's sure to be a Miles Chevrolet up ahead, especially when Miles Chevrolet puts you ahead in a totally restyled 1981 Monte Carlo. Right now you can see this excitingly sleek, aerial dynamically designed Monte Carlo at Miles Chevrolet. Indulge yourself. Stop in and test drive the new Monte Carlo and all the 81 Chevrolets. There's sure to be a Miles Chevrolet up ahead in 1981. Miles Chevrolet, Decatur. You know, I think if we look at that replay again, you're going to see the left foot. Now, this is an unfortunate thing. He was ready to go, and the official, for some reason, called it. Now, that's an unfortunate thing, and I don't know, Rick, what, what you think about it, but when he finally came back, you'll see that left foot slip just when he needs the left. See that? That's right. And that, that just shows you the condition of the field. Here, oh, on the blitz, Johnston hits the deck at the 45. They were really coming hard. Mines came right through there and wasn't tough. Mines, Bill Mines, the middle linebacker, number 53 for Eastern Illinois, has had a big game. He has been doing a lot of blitzing from that inside linebacker's position. He's had a couple sacks. That was the reason for the uh, whistle. Oh, the line judge was out of position, and they blew the whistle, and I really think that that was very costly. Eastern Illinois It kind of took some of that tension when they were ready to explode to go for that fourth down play. I agree with you 100%. Quarterback Chuck Wright had to look up. Here's Johnston over the middle. Marker down, however, as Tim Hannafin, the split end, catches the ball, but there was a marker thrown back at the midfield line. Tom Pittman made the uh, stop by the club. He's played outstanding here today. 5.51 to go.
now the uh, hot air balloons have been blown up in the north end zone and because of that we can't even see the scoreboard that's about the only way we're going to see it we certainly can't see it from the press box 551 to play Cal Poly leading by eight and the ball comes back to the get some hands on the offense well, that's a five yard penalty, penalty for the illegal use of the hands twice uh, now we've seen it today and with a second down and 25 to go, the ball is just a yard on the Cal Poly side of the 50. Oh, good call, but well diagnosed on the draw. Dan Craig was knocked down by Pete Caton, and that's the reason he's an All-American player. Pete Caton really has played himself a fine defensive football game. He has been all over the field, and they put him over the center. They played him at defensive events. Pete Caton, as you point out, a true All-American. They try to hide him, much like they uh, hide Drew Green at Pittsburgh. Tough to hide, those guys. <laughs> They're tough to block. No gain on the play, third and 25. Cal Poly out in front here by eight in the fourth quarter. Rod Shaw, the uh, center, falling on that ball. I don't know what happened. I think you're going to guess. I believe the quarterback pulled out of there a little soon that time, Craig Johnson. Here's uh, Slaughter, who uh, has been really a great player today for Eastern Illinois as uh, their two touchdowns and almost had another one. Double the ball on the one inch line. 4.36 to go in a funny situation. Here's Vasella and they were coming hard for him but they did not get the ball and McGee is driven to the five yard line. Look at the coverage here. Coming through is Ken Rathjen, number 79. Down on the three yard line. Oh, that was a great kick by Vasella. We can't say too much about this young man who has three extra points to his credit today and this 45-yard boomer. Well, Scott McGee right here, a, you know, it's a question whether he should have caught the ball, but Raston comes down there, great coverage, and he says, hey, baby, you aren't going any place. <laughs> Buries him down in there. So now Eastern is back deep in its own territory right from his own end zone. Pops it over the middle to Mahalik. He fumbles the ball. Did he catch it? No. No. Incomplete. Well, I'd like to comment, first of all, on Cal Poly's defense. Their coverage in the secondary has been just really excellent. I know that they've been able to get some pass rush from their defensive linemen, but Cal Poly secondary and linebackers, it's been tough to find a guy open for the quarterbacks of uh, Eastern Illinois. Four minutes and 17 seconds to go. Cal Poly leading Eastern Illinois for the national title in Division II. From the end zone, Slaughter has it out to the five, and he is upended at the eight-yard line by Sven Hasselberg, number 58. Come on, Alex! Watch this now. It's that little swing pass again to Rod Slaughter, but again, Cal Poly... Their people can get off the blocks and they pursue to the ball. Now, look and see how many green jerseys will be around the football right there when the tackle is being made. You see them all coming right to the football. They react very well. Clock moving, 3.42 to go. Eastern Illinois has only one more timeout. Third down from the end zone. Right has to have this one. He's got the Halligan over Grant and he drops the ball. Otis Grant had the ball in his arms at the 25-yard line and couldn't hang on to it. Jones and Alarcio and Gallagher back there. I think your comments about the defensive secondary are, are certainly quite, quite true. He paid his dues. Now watch this. Any time out there, they say if it's easy to be a receiver, somebody's crazy because you wouldn't ask Otis Grant that. He'd tell you it's tough. Coming in there. Here's Mansky back to punt from the end zone. The rush is on, and he gets a high, good kick out of there. Fair catch called for by Robbie Martin. You don't see him do that too much, but he saw the white shirts coming on. Wanting to take no chances. Well, there is the most valuable player of Cal Poly today, Robbie Martin, who is a senior from Orange, California. And Rod Slaughter, who is a senior also from Detroit, Michigan, 
from Eastern Illinois. Chevrolet will send $1,000 to the general scholarship funds of both of those institutions for the outstanding play of Slaughter and Martin in this national championship game from Albuquerque. Out of bounds goes Lewis Jackson. Well, that's something I'm sure that the Cal Poly coaches didn't want. They wanted Lewis Jackson to stay in bounds at all costs because they want that clock to run. They can feel that championship coming on, and they say stay in bounds as it was. Lewis Jackson just helped out the Eastern Illinois cause. He went out of bounds. Incidentally, we'll be announcing the coach of the year in all four divisions of the NCAA, and Chevrolet will be awarding the plaques to those coaches in Division Three, Division Two, Division, well, actually all five divisions, one double A, four division, one double A and one A. There's the marker down, and we do, we'll pick it up uh, right in just a moment. So in addition to the players being honored this year. Head ball foul, personal foul on first the ball. First down. I saw something happen down there with number 12 of, uh, of uh, uh, Eastern Illinois, Don Pittman. I think he mixed it up a little bit with one of the uh, Cal Poly players. On the 35, first and 10. Marker down. Hines making the stop. There's a good look at Rod Slaughter, who distinguished himself today over 100 yards in pass receiving, 75 yards on the ground, two touchdowns. Well, when I saw him last night in the hotel, he says, I'm ready, and boy, he proved it today. He had himself, even though Eastern Illinois looks like they might lose this one, Rod Slaughter gave a great effort. 21 to 13 is the score. Cal Poly has never gone this far before in a national championship playoff, and this is the eighth year of the playoff. So they're closing in now on the first national championship. Eastern Illinois, as I mentioned earlier, won the title in 78. The victory today would mark the school's 16th overall NCAA title, more than any other Division II school, including all sports. Next week, in 1AA Championship from Sacramento, California. That'll be at 2.30 Eastern time, so check your local listings for the time in your area. That will be Eastern Kentucky, defending national champions who defeated Lehigh today, 23-20, against the winner of Grambling and Boise State. The game being played at this moment, and Boise State, the last we heard, was up by 7, 14-7. Well, there is one of the outstanding receivers in college football. That is Scott McGee, a senior from Payless Heights, Illinois, closing out his career today. 30 career TD, some receivers, Scott McGee. And ball down on the 38-yard line with the clock starting to move, three minutes to go. Greg Johnson, who's played brilliantly at quarterback all the way today for Cal Poly. Second and 13. Hand off to Spiker. Grinds away down to about the 36-yard line. Just wanted to keep that clock on the move as Randy Melvin makes the stop. And here it is, the final. Boise State defeated Grambling 14-9. It'll be an Eastern Kentucky-Boise State final next week in Division 1AA in Sacramento, California. Hope you'll join us here on ABC 2.30 Eastern Time. It just uh, can't emphasize enough how much fun it is to do a game for the national championship. Third down. Frank Johnston throws to the sideline, a good safe pass, and Robbie Martin comes up with a reception at the 27-yard line. Rich Brown was hanging on his back, and he still made the catch before he went out of bounds. Oh, here's a remarkable player. Watch this guy now. Watch Robbie Martin, number five, a five-niner, presses to the inside. Rich Brown, he's going for the interception. The ball is perfectly thrown. Look at that grab and that concentration. Robbie Martin, what a big player for a little man. 157 yards today. He has scored three touchdowns, one on a 43-yard run. So if you add the 43 yards that he had on the run and the 157, you have a 200-yard day for Robbie Martin. Now we're going to get a field goal attempt of 45 yards by Tom Vassella. 
has racked up three extra points today for his team. On a fourth down with 2.15 to go. Delay of the game, well, that's going to put him almost out of range, that would be it. You're really stretching it to go 50 yards. Well, he told us yesterday he could kick it. Now he's going to get his chance. But you never know. This, this might be a little situation. I think maybe they might have been trying to draw him off sides a little bit, but they weren't able to do it. You see now Craig Johnston has called timeout. He thinks maybe we better talk this thing over. Masella, incidentally, will be back next year. He's just a junior. Well, they're going to miss players like Craig Johnston and Robbie Martin. But what a glorious way to go out. Looks like they have won it. 2.15 to go on the eight point lead. Don't forget, ABC's Wide yeah. World of Sports returns yeah. next. Yeah. 5 o'clock Eastern, 4 o'clock Central Time. We'll have the WBC World Featherweight Championship bout between Sanchez and the Port. And then the World Sports Acrobatic Championships in the class and next the World Victory Championships. So we're glad to have Wide World back. We'll be celebrating our 20, 20th anniversary come next April of 1981. Now Vasella standing back to do the putting. Good move. Feeling that he can pin the Panthers back there deep. He floats one off his foot, actually he shanked it. And it uh, rolls, fortunately, for the Mustang down to the 14-yard line. He was trying to put it very deep without a return. It was only an 18-yard kick. And so here it is, the moment of truth for the Panthers, 2.06 to go. And keep in mind, though, that if they score and get the two, it could be a tied ball game, and we do have a playoff tie formula. And they have come from behind before. Matter of fact, 21 to nothing there behind once before and came back and won the game. So they're not out of it yet. And from the shotgun, Christensen throws. It is almost intercepted, intended for Otis Grant and Charles McDaniel. Made the bat out of bounds. Jeff Christensen throwing it. And now with a second down. You can see those cheerleaders haven't given up. No, sir. I'll tell you, on that play, Otis Grant for Eastern Illinois made an excellent play. The ball was going to be intercepted by LeCharles McDaniels, and Otis Grant just batted it away. A big play. It gives him another chance. Back from his own three, over the middle, he goes to the tight end, Mahalik, has a first down, and Rob gets it up to the 32-yard line before Alarcio brings him down. And it's a first down for Eastern Illinois. One timeout remaining for each team. No huddle for Eastern. They want to go right away. Move the sticks and let's play. Both teams only have one timeout left to uh, build. That'll be important in a drive like that because you must save them, save them to the end. What a comeback story this would be. And there's the snap going way over the head of Christensen. Back there in, in tough footing, grabs the ball and throws to nobody, and that's going to cost him. Going to cost him the down. That's a very costly play. Uh, that he should not have done. Well, when you're going from the shotgun, the center does not look back at the quarterback back there. And that time, he the ball might be a little muddy, a little slippery. Didn't quite have the grip on it. He put it up over Christensen's head. Christensen head, threw the ball illegally. It's a good call by the official. I thought it was just nobody to throw to. <laughs> well, that stops the clock with 140. But more importantly, it puts the ball down on the one and a half yard line. Attention grounding. On the offense, lost them down, second down. Boy, that really was costly. My goodness, yeah. goodness. One of the most punishing of all penalties. Well, Maryland was defeated by the defending national champions from Louisville today, 78-67. Over the middle, all was intended for slaughter, and he couldn't find it. And it brings up a third down. I think the Cal Poly fans, as we view them on the far side of the field, are all standing. The cheerleaders are there, must be frozen stiff. But they could care less because their team really is only 96 seconds away from a national title in college football. Their first ever. But if you, if you coach football long enough, you know the ball game is not over yet. Anything could happen. They still have two more downs. Another high snap, and Christensen gets it this time. Throws it out of the end zone, and 
He hits his man, Otis Grant, but it's not nearly enough for the first down as Charles McDaniel puts the stop on him. Watch Otis Grant, really, who's been the only person for Eastern Illinois that's been able to get open today. He comes all the way across field. Christensen does a good job. He had pressure. He came out to his right. He finds Otis Grant, throws the ball to him, out of bounds. It's now fourth down, and now or never for Eastern Illinois. And they're going to go for it. They better hurry. Almost running that clock with the 25-second count. And here's the long one. Down the sidelines, it is intercepted. <laughs> That he should not have done. <laughs> All he had to do was knock it out of bounds. They would have had the ball back on the 16-yard line. There's a marker down, however. Well, you know, you condition yourself to intercepting the ball, and I guess when it comes close to you, it's an easy one. An ineligible man downfield. Penalty obviously declined. So Cal Poly will take the ball back at the 41 in their own territory. They would have had it at the 16 with that fourth down. But they're not worried about another touchdown right now. All they want to do is see that clock wind down to 0-0, zero, zero, and they've got themselves a national championship for Cal Poly. 54 seconds to go. And these young men from San Luis Obispo have come into this game, I would guess, no, in the eyes of most experts as the, the underdogs. Offense. After all, they're fourth ranked in the nation against First the nation's top-ranked team in Division II. You'd have to say this is an upset. Yes, but when you're playing for the national championship, both those ball clubs are in here because they're even, and you've got to give credit to both Eastern Illinois and Cal Poly for being here and just a fine football game. Bobby Martin's accounted for five touchdowns in these three playoff games, and three today. And Craig Johnson just takes a tumble on the turf. One timeout remaining. Eastern Illinois will obviously spend it here. They should. With the clock moving, 40 seconds to go. Nope, nobody calls it. Still on the move at 35. Got to use everyone you can. You always hope. Nobody's made a move. Cal Poly is taking its time. They'll take it right now. Justin falls to the ground with 16 seconds to go, and time is called. The Cal Poly players thought that if the uh, officials had motioned the time had run out, it was merely a, a timeout called, and that is the last one that Eastern Illinois will have. So it'll be a long trip back to Charleston, but after all, it took a lot to get here. We'll return for more of the NCAA Division II Championship game right after this. Don Moore Equipment Company in LaPlace and Arcola invites you to see the most productive combine on the market today, the Greener N-Series from Alice Chalmers. The N-Series combine is flexible enough to handle up to a 12-row corn head that will give you more capacity and less bulk, meaning better productivity. See the N-Series at Don Moore Equipment, whose eight-man service department has a total of 100 years of experience. That's important when you're in the field. Plus, Don Moore's parts department with a computerized inventory system. Don Moore Equipment, growing today for you tomorrow. It's not yet the time to talk about interest on checking accounts, but it won't be long. January 1st, 1981, interest earning now accounts will be available from all institutions willing to offer them. In the meantime, an American Savings Cash May 2 payment order account puts you another step closer to interest earning checking, and you'll avoid the January rush. Start a Cash May account at American Savings now, and be that much further ahead in January. Cash May and American Savings. Check into both of them. dramatic picture of Jeff Christensen, quarterback of Eastern Illinois, sobbing on the sidelines. His team out of it now, 21-13, with only 14 ticks of the clock left, and Cal Poly is whooping it up on the far side of the field. Quite a contrast between both sides of the field. <laughs> Uncalled for. Uncalled for that play right there. That you just don't want a football game to deteriorate like this. When you've lost the game like Eastern Illinois, you don't want that by one of your players. Alonzo Lee made no uh, attempt at all to disguise it. And he's being ejected from the game. Alonzo Lee just uh, decided to get one last swipe in there, I guess. Well, you have to learn to win and you have to learn to lose, and that's all part of the game of football, no question about it. Well, he's shaking his head saying it wasn't intentional, but I guess the circumstantial evidence would indicate otherwise. 
So the ball comes up to the 47 yard line with still 14 seconds to play. Rod Shaw, the center who took the brunt of that, shrugged it off. <laughs> well, he's got a championship. He could take a lot of pain right now. Twenty-one to thirteen, Cal Poly in front, and Johnston slides to the ground. Clock moving. There will not be time to get another play underway, and here comes the Cal Poly team from the far side of the field. Look for Joe Harper. There he is in that yellow jacket. He'll be raised to the shoulders of his players. They're jumping for joy, and we'll be back with a final word. Cal Poly twenty-one. Eastern Illinois 13, Cal Poly has won the championship. For the fondest holiday memories, give the gift they'll remember from Team Electronics. Name brand component systems that surround you with sound. Like a Sony STR V15 AM FM stereo receiver. A direct access program sensor allows automatic preset tuning for up to five FM stations. For gifts that are remembered, discover the difference at Team. That's right, Sam. The name's Thermal Guard. They put in my windows without a mess and did it all in one day. Guarantee fuel savings, too. Hi, Sam. That's the eighth call today about our new windows. I wonder how they knew we had Thermal Guard windows in our home. I guess they've never seen me cleaning windows before. Thermal Guard, the number one replacement window. Other companies promise fuel savings. We guarantee it. Call Collect now. 367-0140. All-Star Home Restyling Incorporated. This crowd against Juan Laporte. Also an unusual event that combines strength, agility, and grace. The World Sports Acrobatics Championship. All today on ABC's Wide World of Sports. Well, it's official now. Cal Poly of San Luis Obispo has won the national championship. Here was the most spectacular play of the game with a score 14 to 13. Cal Poly in front. This was the clincher. Craig Johnston throwing and watch the catch by Robbie Martin, his third TD of the day. What do you think of that, Coach? Well, Robbie Martin is my designated small guy for all the small guys in football. What a fantastic grab by Robbie Martin. And what a great day for him. There he is being congratulated by... The uh, other members, there's Ira Jefferson uh, shaking hands with him. The outstanding player for Cal Poly today, Rod Stoller, the outstanding player for Eastern Illinois. Don't forget, next week it'll be Eastern Kentucky against Boise State in the 1AA championship. I'd like to thank Bill Monahan, a superb job of spotting today, and Ricky Bernstein, great job on the stats all year long. Rick Frazano, final word from you. Oh, just uh, it's great to be here, Bill, working with you and being in a national championship game. And so Cal Poly of San Luis Obispo has done it, won the Division II championship in a great upset win over Eastern Illinois today. So hail to the champions from San Luis Obispo. And there's the trophy. This is Bill Fleming along with Rick Forzano saying so long from Albuquerque. Today's coverage of Cal Poly against Eastern Illinois was produced by Eleanor Rieger, directed by Mary Cavalina. Technical director, Bob Bernthal, associate director is Howard Shapiro. We say so long from Albuquerque and once again. Our thanks to the University of New Mexico, the DMO, for their hospitality. Be sure to stay tuned next for the WBC World Featherweight Championship as Salvador Sanchez defends his crown against Juan Laporte. Travel arrangements made through the promotional fee paid by United Airlines. United flies more people to Hawaii than any other airline. That's what the friendly skies are all about. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports. Once again, the final score today. Cal Saturday. Expert tune.